My name is Sophia Perez. My thesis topic is about the genre of creative nonfiction, focusing on the works of Susan Orlean, a well-known writer who has written for The New Yorker and is a best-selling author of book-length works such as The Orchid Thief, The Library Book, and Saturday Night. I was introduced to this genre and Susan Orlean's writing in a literary journalism class, and I have been captivated by her writing ever since. She has a talent for discovering stories in the most unlikely of places and a knack for showing the beauty in the ordinary. When I say ordinary, I am talking about what is normal for the lives of the people and subjects she writes about. What may seem normal in our own lives could be abnormal or atypical to someone else. Creative nonfiction shares similar qualities as standard nonfiction, but it also includes narrative elements and story features such as dialogue, scene setting, voice, and descriptive language. The goal of creative nonfiction is to engage the reader and immerse them in the story as if they were reading fiction. What makes this genre incredible is that writers are taking the real human experience and transforming it into stories that read like fiction. In an interview with Kristen Vukovic, Orlean said, my point is that people are really interesting and that the more you know about life, the more enriched your life will be. That's my only agenda. Creative nonfiction has become one of my favorite genres because I am learning, thinking, and reflecting while reading something that captures my full interest. When you know you're reading something that is true, you can't help but compare yourself and your own experience to the story. The narrative elements are what define creative nonfiction. Writers take on the challenge of taking real life and turning it into a story the challenge of taking specific moments in life and turning them into something comprehensible and meaningful. This means knowing what details to include or leave out and sculpting these facts and details in a way that captures the reader. When students think of nonfiction, they might think of textbooks, which can often contain dry or voiceless writing. Susan Orlean's books are about libraries, orchid collecting, or typical Saturday nights in the US. At first glance, these topics may not be something a fiction reader or anyone else would choose off the shelf at a bookstore, but the story and literary techniques are what will draw them in. I will discuss one of Susan Orlean's pieces and how it is a great example of creative nonfiction and shows her talent for finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. One of my favorite books by Orlean is The Library Book. When I picked it up, I was skeptical. The title itself made me wonder if this book would even be interesting to me. As someone who mainly reads young adult fiction, I didn't know if this book was right for me. Turns out I couldn't put the book down and ended up finishing it in two days. The library book is about the 1986 fire that ravaged the Los Angeles Central Library. You may ask, how does one write an entire book about a library fire? but that is what makes Orlean such a great writer. She doesn't give all the details on the first page. Instead, she slowly builds the reader's curiosity. She also includes historical context of libraries in Los Angeles, a timeline of the day of the fire, and her own thoughts and feelings on the subject. All these things together flow seamlessly and you find yourself captivated by the destruction of the flames while simultaneously learning more about Los Angeles libraries than you've ever had before. Like many of her pieces, the first sentence immediately captures the audience's attention. The first sentence in the library book is, even in Los Angeles, where there is no shortage of remarkable hairdos, Harry Peak attracted attention. This sentence already attracts the reader because it seems initially random and causes the reader to ask questions. Who is Harry Peak? How does he attract attention? not to mention the inclusion of remarkable hairdos. It catches the reader off guard, making them wonder what will come next. Orlean goes on to mention a lawyer, a deposition, and arson investigator, allowing the reader to infer that whoever Harry Peak is, he may have something to do with the library fire. And this is all just on the first page. This opening is similar to fictional openings, where the beginning of the story is starting to take shape and the reader can begin to make inferences and predict what will happen next. The structure of the book consists of multiple storylines. Throughout the book, Orlean writes about her childhood experiences with libraries, 
people she interviewed, and moments she had when she was writing the book. The day of the fire in 1986, Harry Peake and his investigation, and the entire city, entire history of the Los Angeles Central Library. The layout of the book switches back and forth between these things. This type of structure is a quality of fiction writing, and it keeps the readers interested by including different storylines that all have the same thing in common, the fire. Orlean also focused on the importance of libraries and how books allow us to know more about life, which is her agenda in writing. At the end of the book, Orlean says libraries declare that all these stories matter, and so does every effort to create something that connects us to one another, and to the past and to what is to come. The message fits perfectly within the goal of creative nonfiction to connect us to one another and explore what life has to offer. The library book is just one example of Orlean's talent to captivate the reader while also teaching them about topics they might have never learned otherwise. Before I started the library book, I never once thought what might happen if a library had caught fire. Now that I finished the book, I learned about the community of people who work at libraries, how libraries function, how they are a safe space for people, the beauty of books, and the heartbreak that is experienced when they are destroyed. All of this would not have happened without creative nonfiction. All, I wouldn't have had the interest to read a nonfiction piece about this, and I wouldn't have felt sympathy for the people in 1986 related to the story over my love of books or learned about the library's history and the people have, who have contributed to it since its first opening. All of these things came from Orlin's curiosity. She didn't know that the fire ever happened until she moved to Los Angeles. Her son wanted to interview a librarian for his school project and she found, about, found out about the fire from staff who had worked there. She checked she was shocked by the single biggest library fire in the history of the United States. This book is a good example of how she took a moment in her life and used it to fuel the idea for this story. Overall, Susan Orlean has made an incredible impact on the creative nonfiction genre and how a story can come from the little things in life.